Hey guys, Alan here with NVX, and today behind me I've got a Tesla Model 3. And uh, a lot of people inquire about our boost box that we actually uh, make for this. And as you can see, we have already have one that's uh, installed in this vehicle here. However, we kind of wanted to go over the kit really quick and let you know exactly what it comes with. And what we're going to do is we're going to take apart this vehicle, even though it's already installed, and kind of give you a quick rundown as to where you make the connections, where we mounted our amplifier, where you get signal, and so forth. So that way, if this is uh, something that you want to attack as a DIY on your own, uh, this will give you a little bit more insight as to what you're going to need to do to attempt this job. Or if you're not comfortable and maybe want to take it to a shop, you'll kind of maybe know at that point. It's a fairly easy install in my opinion, although I've been doing this for a long time, so that may not necessarily be fair. But uh, let's take a look at what it comes with here. You can first see it comes with the boost enclosure uh, itself, which is the vehicle specific enclosure for this car. It's loaded um, with a 10 inch VS series woofer. Uh, the rest of the kit, uh, we try to make it as complete as possible. You're going to get your X-Kit 82, which is your complete wiring kit. It comes with your fuse holder, RCA, speaker wire, power wire, ground wire, connectors. Uh, of course, the VADM1, uh, that's the micro uh, monoblock amplifier that's going to actually power uh, the woofer. And, of course, our XLCA2, which is our premium LOC. That's going to allow us to tie into factory audio system to get signal and actually provide the turn on to the VADM1 amplifier. All right, now that we've gone over what's included in the kit, we're going to go ahead and jump into what we really need to take apart to achieve this install. So uh, we're definitely going to need to remove the trunk liner. Uh, we're going to need to be able to run uh, and get access to some of the stuff behind the panels. Uh, depending on if you have the premium audio system uh, or the base model audio, if you have the premium system, you already have a factory subwoofer in the right rear corner panel. The factory amp is back there, and that's where we're going to be able to grab signal um, mount our XLCA2 um, and if you do have a base model audio system of course you're not going to have that factory subwoofer you're going to need to actually tap audio in a different location the most common point would be to grab signal from the front doors so you'll be able to get a uh, signal at the front left and front right uh, kick panel uh, is usually the easiest way to tackle that uh, but for those of you that have the premium audio system the installation is a little bit easier because everything's really in the back of the vehicle now one of the first things you're going to want to go ahead and do is you're going to want to remove this upper trim panel. Underneath on the right hand side and the left hand side there's actually just a simple panel clip and this will pop off. I've already removed the panel clips. Now of course you're not going to have the subwoofer already installed. Um, there's hardware that actually replaces one of the panel clips for the actual installation. But since your car is probably likely stock at this point, you're going to remove each panel clip, one on each side, and then drop this panel. So once you have the panel clips off, it's pretty simple actually this panel just comes right off now that we've gone ahead and removed the upper panel it's time to remove this lower panel here um, you can simply start by pulling the gasket around here um, once you do that you'll be able to pull up on the panel and it'll come off it's literally just held in by a couple panel clips Included with the boost enclosure is the actual instructions that actually show you how to mount it, which is why we're kind of going into some detail on uh, where you route things and where you connect. But the instructions are step by step on how to actually mount the enclosure to the vehicle. One of the things that you have to do is you actually have to cut the trunk liner. This is normally lined up here, which um, actually is where the panel clip goes in to hold this upper piece. This basically gets tucked in behind it. The reason why you have to do that is because the bracket actually will sit flat against this uh, jacknut and then the panel will go on and bolt through. So the panel will then now be held in uh, by the bolt that goes into the jack nut, um, and that's all held into place. So all you have to do is simply open up this hole slightly larger than the factory hole that held in the clip, um, and then of course install your jack nut. Once the box goes in place, the bracket lines up, you install your upper panel, and you put your 10 millimeter bolt right into it and then you just align the box, tighten it up, it's nice and snug, and you're done. All right, now that you have the lower trim panel off, we do actually have to remove this lower uh, trunk liner panel, but the only way to actually do that is to fold down the seats or remove the back seat. There's a portion of it that's actually hooked um, down below the actual seat cushion, which prevents you from just pulling it out, but you actually need to get it out in order to get to some of the panel clips and actually pull this right-hand side panel off. So we're going to go ahead and move from here to the inside of the vehicle where we can start taking apart uh, the rear seat. 
we actually need to get to that anyway. Even if we didn't need to take that out, that's actually where we're going to get to the power source uh, to be able to power the actual VADM1 uh, monoblock amplifier. All right, now we're inside the vehicle. We're going to have to actually take out the back seat cushion first. Now, before you just start yanking and thinking that that's how it's going to come up, um, there, if you feel underneath the seat, there's actually just a small little lever, um, and you literally just flip it one way, and then you can lift up. So it's, it's really easy. So don't start yanking. Just find the lever, and then you can pull up. All right, so once you get the seat cushion removed, you'll notice that it's actually attached by uh, a wire harness on each side of the seat. So um, it's a simple clip. You literally can just push it in with your finger, pull it out, and then that sets the uh, seat free on one side. You'll need to do that for both sides. All right, now we have to go ahead, now that we have the seat cushion out, we have to go ahead and remove um, the left and right part of the seat back that's separate from it. So to do that, you can just pull forward, it is a clip, so it might be a little difficult to get in there. Once it's out, then you can just lift up and it comes right out. You'll see that there's a clip that's right here. It snaps in to the back here. And then there's an alignment pin and a uh, panel alignment uh, clip right here that fits right into the body. So once you pull that out, then you can lift up and it sets free. Um, you will have to do that for both sides, left and right. So earlier I had mentioned the reason why we needed to take the back seat out was because we had to remove the seat to be able to get this rear uh, panel of the floor liner out. It actually is hooked underneath here. So we do have to remove the back seat. It's actually pretty simple. You're just gonna remove these two bolts on each side and actually just undo the harness. But besides that, one of the reasons why we needed to get back here was actually to show you where the power source is that you're gonna connect your VADM1 uh, amplifier. So if you remove this, uh, foam cover here uh, you will see this is your 12 volt output that actually runs from here all the way to the, the battery now of course there's really no need to actually run the power wire all the way to the battery when you can grab it here so this is where we grabbed power our 12 volts now of course this is your ground and uh, behind this panel we actually grounded our amplifier we have our cables running up here so we have our power and ground that are Tessa tape and zip tied up with our factory loom where our amplifier is mounted up here hidden behind the panels. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the seat back here um, in just one second. Uh, now with a 13 millimeter socket, um, that's usually what's probably easiest to use. You can just go ahead and remove the two 13 millimeter nuts on this side as well as that side. All right, now on each side uh, to actually take the seat out, um, you're actually gonna need to remove this wire harness. Pretty simple, just like the ones that were um, plugged into the bottom part of the cushion. You just press down the clip, slide it out, one on each side, super easy. All right, now with the harness undone, you can actually go ahead and pull the lever at the top of the seat, fold it down, lift up on this corner, and you'll be able to slide out the actual back of the seat. All right, now on this side, it's basically the exact same thing. However, this particular seat belt is actually bolted down here. Now it's up to you if you actually want to unbolt that uh, part of the seat belt to actually physically take the entire seat out. In my opinion, it's not necessary. However, if you want to do it, it's just a little extra work. I'm not going to take it out uh, to show you here. I'm simply going to put a little towel down and I'm going to fold down the seat and I'm going to take out the seat and just move it forward here. Now, of course, with that towel, we know nothing's gonna scuff up the leather. Now, the reason why we needed to actually get to this point was because all of this was under, this carpet was hooked underneath where the baby seats would uh, actually connect, uh, like if you have a car seat. So um, now that this is all out, um, we actually can pull this forward and get access to actually taking this panel out. All right, now that we've got the back seat out um, and we've got the trunk liner at the bottom free, now we're back at the back of the vehicle. There's a panel clip under here on each side and down the rails of the carpet piece, it's the back side of it. It's actually just held in by Velcro. Um, honestly, from the factory, it's not really attached very well. You're going to peel it up. The Velcro doesn't really come undone. It's more like double stick. It's going to come off of it. Uh, maybe if you're super careful about it or slow, um, but basically, we've already popped this one up. We're gonna pop this up here. We pop that side up. 
and then you're going to go ahead and pull this whole piece out. So now that we got the lower uh, trunk liner out, uh, there's a panel clip that I've already removed here. You're going to have to remove this one, this one here, and of course there's one all the way in the back. This is the like double stick kind of Velcro that they tried to do here. It's kind of cheesy in my opinion. It does restick, um, but um, you know if you want to uh, maybe purchase some more um, to double stick it down, you can. If not, it likely will restick itself. But for now, we're going to go ahead and pop these up. All right, we've gone ahead and removed that rear panel clip, but there's one more that you need to take off, so don't forget that, otherwise you won't be able to remove the panel. Even if you forget to take this one off, clearly you'll be able to tell that you need to take it off first um, in order to actually remove the actual panel itself. Cool, now that you have all of them free, you will actually remove this rear panel, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Good? Yep. All right, so if you remember at the beginning, we had actually said that one of the reasons why we were going back here was because this had the factory amplified system. So this is the factory subwoofer enclosure um, that's back here. This is the factory amplifier. This is our XLCA2. It made sense to put it right back here with it. So we were able to tap in to the audio signal from the sub right here, which is really close to the factory amplifier. And of course the power for the XLC XLCA2, we were able to get uh, right at the actual uh, harness that plugs into the amplifier as well. Now, of course we made a custom little bracket to float the XLCA2 there. Now it doesn't have to go there. There's other spots you can put it. It's really up to you. That's what made sense to us. Um, you know, if you may want to mount it to the rear deck lid and route the wires down, you can do that. If you want to incorporate it into, let's say, like an amp rack or something in this panel, you can do that as well, too. It kind of just depends on what you want to do. I'm always uh, out of sight, out of mind, you know, want things kind of hidden, don't really want to see it. So, um, so there's XLCA2, like I said, signal, power, amplifiers right here. Our RCA cable is running from the XLCA2 all the way up and over along this loom, which we have zip tied and tested taped with the other cables that are going to our VADM1, which is mounted right there. This is the plug for the audio signal. So the RCA plugs into that, it's kind of hidden right behind there. Now on this side of the amplifier, you've got your power and speaker outputs. Um, I'll jump on over to the other side and explain where those are routing. Now, of course, on this side, you can see we've got power, we've got ground, we've got our remote, our remote that runs all the way over to the XLCA2. Um, it does a signal sensing turn on, so once it sees that the factory amplifier is on, it immediately turns on this amplifier. Uh, we've got our output of our amplifier that runs all the way over. You can see it going along the back there to the left-hand side of the trunk where the boost enclosure uh, gets mounted. So, so pretty straightforward overall. These wires run all the way down. You'll see the fuse holder where we put it and mounted it here, which connects to the power here. And of course we, hard to see, but we used a factory grounding point, which we cleaned up with a wire wheel um, and made sure we had a solid ground and just bolted using a factory bolt there. So overall, pretty straightforward. Now, of course, you're gonna wanna make sure you do all of your system adjustments and everything prior to putting uh, everything back um, in the vehicle. Uh, but overall, pretty straightforward, power ground, run it up, mount our amp here, signal, grabbed it in the back, Ran our RCA right up over here, and um, that's pretty much it. Um, start to finish, I guess if you have all the tools that you need, in most cases it would probably take you probably a good four hours solid. Um, removing all the panels, taking your time. Now, of course, grabbing the audio signal on this car was relatively easy. Everything was pretty much in the back here. Now, if you do have the base model audio system, you're not going to be able to get signal in the back. You're going to have to get signal, most likely, um, in the front left and front right kick panel 
you have to get it at the front doors. So since the factory, the factory base model system does not have a subwoofer. So in this particular case, we did not run a base knob for the XLCA2 does come with a remote base knob controller. Pretty straightforward. If you do want to run that, run it along this wire loom, tuck it behind the panels and run it up front wherever it's convenient for you to adjust the base up and down. I tuned this car in a way where you didn't really need it. Um, adding that sub complemented the system really well and you could use the fine tune adjustments um, on the factory head unit. So other than that, um, pretty much uh, everything that we took apart, you're gonna do in reverse to put back together. And that is a brief overview on how to install a Tesla Model 3 boost kit with the included XLCA2, the VADM1, the XKIT82 amplifier wiring kit, and of course the boost loaded enclosure for the Tesla Model 3. I'm Alan with NVX. Thanks for watching.